What? Don't judge me. I don't like to wash my hair. <laughs> What's up you guys? Welcome back. And if you're new, be sure to smash that subscribe button before you go. Today's video is going to be kind of intense. Just, I'm going to warn you right now. I might cry. I'm sorry about it. You guys are asking me about this, so uh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> So I'm just gonna jump into it today. I'm not gonna have a 20 minute intro. I'm just gonna dive right in. So today's video is about bonding after foster care. Now so many of you have asked me about this, about what it was like with my daughter and how we handled it and what like the procedure was with DHS and getting her back and working a case. I mean, you're asking me a lot of questions. So I'm gonna try to answer most of them today. So here we go, bonding after foster care. I'm sorry if I cry, it's just who I am at this point. Um, when I was working at my DHS case, I had a lot of stipulations. One of them is visitation. So Micah, for some reason, it was so frustrating, but she was placed four hours away from me. Now, when you get out of the joint and you have no family, you have no job, you have no money, you don't even have shoes, because that was me, I had to borrow Nikes. <laughs> Um, you have to struggle and hustle and I was like hustling up rides, you know, like god my life was so different I used to used to hustle in a much different way And then when I get out I'm hustling up gas money and rides, but I just found a way I would have people um, Give me rides to go visit her and then finally I bought a car So I would have to drive four hours see my daughter for two hours drive home four hours and I was having to juggle two different jobs at the same time, but it kept me busy and it kept me focused. So I was just very fortunate to have two different bosses that were understanding of the situation that I'm like, okay, I need this day off. I need this day off. I'm sorry. I just got to do it. There would even be times where I would be so depressed after getting back from a visit. I'd get back around 6 p.m., 7 p.m. I would go to work at my telemarketing job from 7 p.m. to 10.30 or 11 p.m. instead of resting. Like, I just spent the whole day in the car. I would just go to work just to kind of keep my mind busy and, like, not think about it too much because it was really hard. It was heavy. And this little girl did not know me. <laughs> she was, what, one and a half when I started visiting her? It was just... She was beautiful, she was precious, but I was a stranger. She was with these people for a year and a half. That was her mom and dad, you know? So she didn't understand. Well, I would get there and she was just not getting the best piece of me. She was getting a really tired, really like worked to death, skinny and hungry person. <laughs> you know, she wasn't getting like the full happy me, even though I was so blessed to play with her and have her and spend that quality time. I was so tired, you guys, you know, and that was just really difficult. So then after the two hour visits, they extended them to four hours. Now let's think about it again. I have to drive four hours, visit my daughter in some park or McDonald's. I don't have a friend there. I have to take her somewhere for four hours, then drive home for four hours. So those visits just looked like me feeding her McDonald's and playing in the play place or me feeding her McDonald's in the park if it wasn't raining. I mean, it was just really tough and I was so tired, but grateful and blessed to have that time with that beautiful little baby. Not little baby, but she was my baby. <laughs> she still is my baby. So then the judge decided we're gonna give you six hours, which is even like harder because I didn't have but one friend in that town in Arkansas. So I would have to kind of like infringe on their Saturday and kind of be like, hey, I'm coming over for six hours today, sorry. You know, and my friend was very like welcoming and open to that. She was very nice to me and that was great. I'm so grateful for her. I'm gonna tell you more about this friend too in a later video. So anyway, just for the sake of this video, I would have to spend six hours at my friend's house with her two little girls and play and it was just awkward because not only am I getting to know this child, but like these people are watching me interact with her and I just felt like a fish in a fishbowl. I mean, it was so tough. So. I had supervised visits to start with and then they made them unsupervised. So then I was able to kind of use my discretion and go to wherever I wanted to go, like that friend's house. And as long as my child was safe and I was following all the rules, it was okay. But I was honestly scared. I didn't know anything about kids. I never had a kid. I didn't know what to feed the kid. I didn't know what to say to the kid. I didn't know what to do. And it was just a really uncomfortable and awkward situation at first. You know, it was like, oh, I'm your babysitter for six hours. I mean, she didn't know. It was. It was hard. I'm trying to bond with my child. I'm trying to get to know my child. I'm trying, oh, I'm gonna cry. Ugh. I'm trying to get my child to know me and trust me and love me. And that was so hard, you guys, because she really just didn't know who I was. And I'm sorry that I get emotional, but this is a very personal, sensitive topic to me. And I know you guys understand, but I have to say I'm sorry because I never cry until I talk about this moment and this situation with my daughter because, man, we've been through hell. So. Finally, the judge decided, you know what? We're gonna give you overnight visits. I was both really blessed and grateful and happy 
and very worried, <laughs> like really worried. So now let me just explain to you how this went down. I'd have to drive four hours to pick up my daughter, drive home four hours. That cost me gas money and time. We would get to go to sleep together, have dinner together, and then um, wake up the next morning and we'd have to go. So I drove her back four hours and drive home four hours. So that was my entire weekend was spent either in the car in transit or trying to get some rest with this baby that doesn't know me. And it was so hard. It cost double the money to go back and forth and it was just really a really stressful and difficult time but I knew it's what had to be done and there was no way I was gonna give up there was no way I was gonna miss a single visit you guys I did not miss one visit and they had bad weather you know what I'm a New Yorker we driving through it <laughs> because I just knew if I'm gonna if I miss an appointment or I miss a visit maybe they can petition to terminate my rights I don't know I'm just gonna do everything they say and more so then I was able to get which I was so blessed to have because it changed everything it changed the game I was able to have temporary custody and that means clap round of applause that she was able to stay in my home now DHS gave me daycare vouchers I know you guys have asked me about that if I got any kind of assistance that's the only help I got but I was so grateful for that because I couldn't afford anything I mean I was overdrafting my bank account just to pay for gas back then like it was so hard it was so hard so I was doubting myself I didn't know if I was gonna provide a good home for her I didn't know if the foster parents she was with were gonna be better for her because they're amazing good-hearted Christian people that I completely trust and I still talk to to this day so I, I had a lot of self-doubt a lot of fear a lot of worry I didn't know how to handle this but um because Micah had been transferred back and forth between me and the foster parents so much for almost a year and now she's coming to live with me, she had attachment disorder. And that looked like every time I left the room, she'd be upset. She didn't know if I was gonna come back and I have to like at nighttime, just breaks my heart to think about it because I know that's gonna have a lasting impact on her. So at night, she'd be in her little baby toddler bed and I would sit next to her, I'd read her like five different books and I would just sit there with her until she got to sleep. And I did that so she felt secure. And I would hold her hand and just sit in there with her. But almost every single night, I would wake up to her sleeping on my floor and I'd just have to pick her up and put her in my bed. And I tried to get her to be independent because that was just the advice I was getting at the time. But there were nights where I just said, you know what, just cuddle with me, baby girl, it's okay. You can sleep with me. And I tried to separate that a little bit more and more as she got older. I'm like, okay, let's be a big girl. Let's be a big girl today and sleep in your own bed because I just wanted her to feel secure and feel safe. So that took time for her to feel like that. And now <laughs> she sleeps in her own bed and she's amazing and she doesn't really remember that kind of thing. So I wanna to briefly touch on the fact that I love the foster parents. So they were really, it was really bittersweet for them. They were happy for me that I got Micah back, but they were also are so in love with her and they wanted to see her. So there would be times where I would go visit them and Micah would get very emotional when we left because she was so confused. I even let her spend a weekend there and she came back and she was so heartbroken, you guys. And I just had to learn as I went. And now she understands, like she's been here for you know almost five years. So she knows that I am mom, he is dad, this is your sister, this is your home. But when she was two, three years old, she really didn't understand that this, this person is not family, I am family, and she missed having all those kids around. They have, they have six kids of their own. Um, so she just missed having all those kids running around, all her little play buddies and playmates and having a big, huge family, and it's just me. <laughs> like, sorry, it's just me, but like she only had me and Reese. There wasn't tons of kids running around, and Micah requires a lot of attention. She also does have ADHD, so, it's been tough, it's been difficult, but I think Micah and I just have this bond. Like, it's just a very unique bond. It's very special. It's something that me and her, like, like she knows she has a story, she knows we have a story, and like, that's my girl, you know what I mean? It's hard to explain. But the bond that I have with Micah is very different than the bond that I have with Riley. I'm kind of more of like, like a parent, like with Riley. I don't know if that makes sense. And. I don't baby Micah and I definitely don't spoil my, well, that's not fair, I spoil them, I know I do, whatever. But it's just different because I have Riley, I had Riley since she was, you know, a newborn obviously, and I was able to get Micah. She has a gotcha day and it's just a very different feeling, you know? I look at Micah and I see the beautiful blessing that she is, like she is a miracle. Like it is a miracle that I not only had a healthy pregnancy, healthy, ramen noodles, <laughs> but I was able to carry her to term and I was able to get her back. So. I can't really explain it in words, but the bond that I have with Micah is so fierce and so strong, and that is my girl. Like, 
I can't wait until she's like 30 and we can be best friends. <laughs> no, that's not true. I want her to stay a little forever. So hopefully this answered some of your guys' questions. I have like 27 video ideas for you guys. So be on the lookout for that. Stay safe, stay sober, and I will see you in my next video.